Good afternoon, Olive, Arlo, and Frank. Grip Pop coming to you from the living room in Jack's Beach. Olive, you are in Orlando today. I think you've gone to the zoo. You're visiting your other grandparents. I hope you're having a great time. I can't wait to see you. It's hard to have you this close. You're two hours away, <clears throat> but we can't hold you. Very cold here. I went out for a walk today. I'll talk about that in a second. <clears throat> when, when I was a kid, I hardly ever was in a hospital for any reason. I was born, and and we, and probably, probably we stayed. My mom and me stayed in the hospital overnight, maybe a couple of days. Back then, they they might have had to stay there for a while. We went home. A couple years after that, I don't know exactly how old I was, maybe four, five years old. I had uh, tonsillitis, so I had my tonsils removed. There are these things in your, in the back of your throat. Uh, when I was, I think, six years old, but maybe I was in sixth grade. I, it's kind of foggy. <clears throat> I broke my foot. I jumped off the lifeguard stand in Stone Harbor. And I think they took me to the ER. <clears throat> they put a cast on it. And I was okay. But then in 2006, <clears throat> when I was, I guess, 53 years old, I got throat cancer, and I was in the hospital <clears throat> at least two times, maybe three. One time I had surgery and all kinds of crap going on. Another time I, I was dehydrated and they, they brought me in just for a couple of days to give me liquids, intravenous liquids, intravenous liquids through um, a... Um, my, through a needle. That's what they do. <clears throat> if you can't drink enough liquid to be hydrated, then you need to have it have a needle stuck in you, and it slowly drips in. Then, in 2019, so I was 66. I was on a bike ride, and and this man hit my bike with his car and ran over my foot, like physically ran over my foot. One of the tires came to rest on top of the foot. It blew out <clears throat> the jogging shoe that I had on, and there were deep bruises. No broken bones, but I had problems. I had to go to uh, physical therapy after that and rehab it. And that's the thing. As you get older, things start to wear out on your body. and So you want to think about that. And you want to think about that, I'm especially talking to you, Frank. When you're your age, you always want to, you already want to be thinking about the 50-year-old Frank Meyerini, the 60-year-old Frank Meyerini, the 70-year-old Frank Meyerini. And you want to do some things in life that are going to make that Frank Meyerini, all those different Frank Meyerinis, healthy, which will, will keep them happy. I mean, it's not, not the only thing, but we're, we're going to talk about this in detail. Then I, I got here and I started to have problems with that left leg again. I had a torn Achilles. Had that rehab for a couple months, got back to running, tore the Achilles on the right side. 
I was put in a boot so that, you know, I could call myself ambulatory, but I really wasn't. I mean, I, well, I really was, but not very ambulatory, let's put it that way. And in the middle of that, while all that was going on, I had cataract surgery on my left eye because your eyes start to wear out. The, and the cataracts are the lenses in your eyeballs. And then the next month, cataract surgery on the right. And now in January, so I, it was November, December, and January. I, I tell people I was in the the surgery of the month club. Please cancel my subscription. <clears throat> I don't want to be a part of that club anymore. So, and I knew all along for the last couple of years that I had a blockage in my right carotid artery. And the carotid artery is up there in, so it's up, if you look at the pointer, I'm pointing on my body right there. It's right up in there, the carotid artery. All of you can ask your, well, Arlo, you can ask your mom, or all of you can ask your dad if Grandpa's full of crap or not, if that's where the carotid artery is. But I'm pretty sure because I have a big scar down here, and I'll show that to you in a minute. So I knew that I was going to have it repaired, and I would go in the hospital, stay overnight. They would put a stent, which is, kind of like a balloon in there. It was over 70% blocked, so only 30% of the blood was getting through, which meant only 30% of the oxygen going to my brain was getting through from that side. I mean, you have two of them. But right, well, I don't know if one goes up and one goes down. So. One of the things was is, is that I would go running and for the first minute or so of my run, I would be very, very dizzy. I felt like I was gonna pass out. <clears throat> and I'm sure that that's what did this. I also have high blood pressure and I have had for several years, even though I'm, I run and I ride a bicycle and I do all this stuff and I don't eat a really crappy diet and I don't drink beer every night. But I, you know, my blood pressure that we had trouble keeping it under control, but hopefully now they won't as this blockage is open. My blood will flow better and that should keep my blood pressure down. And that's how your life hopefully is gonna go. I'm wishing you a bunch of medical problems, but that you, your medical problems would be clustered around later in life. I'm hoping that you guys live very healthy lives. And my hope and prayer is that you, you don't ever have to go in a hospital. But if you look at the statistics, and we're not gonna get into statistics today, but if you look at them, the possibility of you going in when you're 70 is way more than when you're 22 or four or six months old, like you guys. So. Let's see what we got here. And I promised I would show you good old grandpa, so I didn't want to show you that. So here's the scar that I have and they marked me all up. This is all stuff from the cancer-related stuff. My, my trach was there. I had a breathing tube sticking out of there. But they actually put this stent in, in here and up through here. So in here right now is this, I guess it's made out of plastic, rubber, some kind of thing. Hopefully not toxic. 
and that's in there, and that, that's holding it open. And, and so what they do is, is they take and run a, a tube from here down to my groin, and I'm not going to show you a picture of my groin. It's all bruised. I don't want to get an X-rated uh, YouTube video. And they ran my blood out of my body and threw that tube and back into my body so they could filter it and that I didn't get a, a stroke. Because that's one of the things. I mean, it's I think it's called plaque. And if it breaks loose and goes up into your brain, you'll have a stroke. Strokes are not good. So, you have to manage your health. And how do you do that? Let's look at this. What is health? First of all, we'll look at that. Here's the Cambridge English Dictionary. The condition of the body and the degree to which it is free from illness or the state of well-being. Then it gives you some, you know, how to use it in a sentence. And they go into... Other, other things. But here's one. The condition of someone's body or mind or the state of well-being. And one thing that I, I found was this. When you look at the definition, it seems pretty simple, but it's not. Now, I don't agree with, with this article 100%, but nobody agrees with anything 100%. But it's an excellent article. I found it on, on LinkedIn. And what I want to do is well, let's start with this she says um, health is how you feel in the morning when you wake up feel when you go to bed handle stress deal with your busy week ahead and handle relationships in your life all these things are interrelated and we're going to look at this in a little bit of detail Now, what I want to do is they, they name these physical, intellectual, spiritual, emotional, environmental, social. And, and here's the person, Dr. Jennifer Shaw, doctor of physical therapy, a yoga instructor, and a wellness consultant. And she has some sort of a, of a program that she... It's probably selling, but it, and that's fine. So let's start with social. And it says here that social health includes all relationships. This includes with your family, friends, and community. If if I've said anything to you about improving any part of your life that you should remember, and if you go back and watch some of the videos that I've done about other things, about how to live your life, how to live your best life, you'll see that I always say that if you want to improve something, measure it. You know, if, if you have a poor diet, measure what you're eating. Trust me, when you measure it, 
It's because you're scrutinizing it. You don't have to judge it or anything. Oh, I'm eating bad stuff. Measure it. And you won't eat that extra cookie. So, all of these things, you should be able to do something measurable. And goals should be, I think they're called smart goals. But a couple of the things are that they have to be achievable and measurable to have a goal. So you want the healthiest relationships you can with your parents, your grandparents, your friends, um, your siblings, Frank, neither of the other two of you have siblings yet, but hope springs eternal. But it says here, I often ask my clients, what do they have in their schedule for the week that is fun. And this is an area many people struggle with. To simplify the concept, even adults need play dates. Go for a hike with a friend, dinner with your family, see a movie, get out and be social. Whatever that looks like to you, make sure it is in your schedule so it happens. So as you get into the business world, well, you younger guys, as you get into the school world even, and then eventually into the business world, you're going to have schedules. You'll have class schedules. And you're going to have to keep a schedule. So you're going to have to decide what you can get done and what you can't get done. And if you don't schedule something, you might as well not even say, oh, I'm going to do this. But if you schedule it and you stick to your schedule... You'll get it done. So when you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, don't just let the relationship play its course. Keep it alive. Go out on a date. Schedule that. Even if it's something like, well, the third Wednesday of every month, I, I take my daughter out on a, on a date. You know, I take my son out for a date. Schedule those things. It, it's very, very important. Because your social health really Im uh, um, impacts your overall health. So the next is environmental. And this doesn't mean environmental the way that you probably are thinking about it. But... This is your, your immediate like living situation, your working, your school situation, your friends. You want to be in healthy, clean environments. When you have a, a significant other or a spouse, don't go to bed mad. That's a horrible environment to be in. And this impacts your health, your physical health. If, if you hate looking at the person that you go to sleep next to, it's going to gnaw at you. And it might take a little while, but that's going to affect your overall well-being and your physical health. People get ulcers in their stomach from worrying and, and from hating. The next is emotional. <clears throat> and it says, this is the health of our mind, of our thoughts, our feelings. Are you able to maintain a positive mindset when stress arrives? And this is another one. This is going to, you know, what are some emotions? Fear is an emotion. Anger is an emotion. Well, what happens when you become angry? When you're constantly afraid? Your overall well-being suffers. And part of that is your health. 
And this is about how to, how to maintain your health as you age in life. She says in here, another great release for me when my emotions are running high is to journal. I enjoy getting my thoughts out of my mind and onto paper. And, and I don't journal, but I do a commonplace book. I've done a video on how to do a commonplace book. Journaling's a little different. You're kind of writing down your story. I consider what I'm doing right now journaling. I'm, I'm leaving a legacy for you guys, for the three of you. So that when I'm not here, you can reach back and, and go, okay, well, what would my grandpa have told me to do in this situation? But the, the one that helps me with emotional stuff, well, there's two of them actually, and one is praying. But this isn't about getting you to pray or getting you to, to believe in Jesus or anything like that. But um, to pray and to meditate. When I was in the hospital getting ready for the surgery, I was in pre-op. They were doing things to my body. Some of them hurt, not a lot. But then when I was done the surgery, they were doing things to my body that kind of did hurt. And I had some physical problems and I had to lay there flat for four hours. And I mean, they were saying, no, you can't get up. Because they had opened up this artery. And so they opened up the carotid artery and then in my groin they opened up the, I think it's called the femoral artery. So I had these open wounds that could start squirting blood out and I could die from that. So they just had me lay there and, and I had to, you know, I was miserable. I'm like, what the heck? I just hate this. I'm so miserable. Oh, I can meditate. And I meditated. Did it make everything perfect? No. Did it make everything better? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Meditation makes things better. I've done a series on meditation for you guys. I strongly suggest that you that you do the teaching part of the series, and then I have guided meditations. I think they're 20 minutes long, each one. There's maybe six videos in all, and there's there's four, four of those six, I think, are guided meditations. It's called Meditation for Time Travelers. I tell you how to travel to the past, the future, and the present. Okay, so the... Let's see if I find it here. Because when you go backwards... When you go back... So the fourth one that we're going to do even though it's number three here, is spiritual. And I just talked about that. You know, spend time with God every day. Full disclosure, I'm a born-again Christian. That God is Jesus Christ. I'm going to try to spend time with Him every day. Because... You need a spiritual grounding. Now, can that spiritual grounding be other than Jesus Christ? I, I believe it can. It, it, um, if you're a Muslim, spend time in, in, in prayer with Allah. I don't know exactly how other religions well, besides Judaism, if you're, you know, if you're Jewish, spend time with God the Father. And the other ones, Hinduism and, and those things, I, I really, I know some things about them, but I don't know if they pray. But whatever it is that they do to be grounded, in Hinduism, one of the things is yoga. But yoga, I do yoga sometimes, not as much as I should. And, and I consider it part of meditation. It's 
meditation that involves physical uh, manipulations of your body. Spend time with God every day. Now these things, I, I don't know that you can necessarily measure them. You can put them on your list of things to do, and that's and that's good. And so, you know, I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to I'm going to pray. I'm going to meditate, and and you measure them by not necessarily writing them down. Oh, I I did this much meditation because it becomes too much. It has to be something that you can maintain. And we're going to get, in a second, we're going to get into what I do. Number five is intellectual. And they have this quote here. Once you stop learning, you start dying. And that was supposedly said by Albert Einstein. I didn't look it up, but I would imagine he said it. I don't know if I was ever the sharpest tack in the box or the sweetest cookie in the box or any of that kind of stuff or the brightest light bulb in the pack. But I do know one thing. When I went through the cancer, I was warned by the doctors that I would have cognitive dis decline and that I should do some things, to do some things physically, take care of my physical body, and mentally to take care of my intellect so that I, I wouldn't descend into this. It, it's almost like a dementia where I would have such a decline that I you know, had trouble doing normal things. Now, they never said, oh, you're, you're getting to that point or anything because I went out and, you know, wrote a book about running and, and uh, got a master's degree. Even recently, I did this thing at the University of North Florida where I signed up for this. It's a study. It's a five-year study where they have you play computer games. I think I had to play nine of them a week. Some of them were fun. Well, one of them was fun. The others were like, eh. Um, but I did it because it, it was a study to see if these games help people. And if they help people, they're going to help me. So I did that. Now, I, I don't have to play those games for a while. And I think, like, any year they're going to make me play them again. And then at the end of the five years, they'll have me play them again. These are things that you have to do. You have to stay sharp. Now, if you start working on that now then you'll have less to worry about when you're 50-year-old Olive, when you're 60-year-old Arlo, and when you're 70-year-old Frankie. And then the last but not least, and I went in this order because um, I'm going to show you how I monitor my physical health. The things that I do, there may be better ways to do it, I'm sure there are, but it's the way that I do it. Now, this is exercise. These are the things that go into maintaining your physical health. Exercise, rest, stretching, and diet were these bodies that have bones in them, organs in them, muscles in them. We have the inner lining of our, our alimentary canal, like from our, our mouth down to your butt, and our outer skin. We're a total organism, and we have to maintain every part of that organism. So the, the vascular, the cardiovascular system, we have, to, we have to do something like running. We need to do cardio. 
you should do some. I, I think you should do some every day, maybe one day a week rest. You don't have to do a lot. We have muscles, and those muscles need to be made strong. So they have to be fed correctly, and they and they have to be. Uh, and you can also work out. You don't have to, but if you do things in your life, if you play tennis or you go surfing or stand up paddleboarding, whatever it is, you're going to work out your body. And, and you'll be in good shape. But those, those muscles need to be supple, so you need to stretch. And your diet has to be a diet that it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be one of those people that's like, oh, I can never eat a carb ever again in my life. Like, no, eat the carbs, but exercise. But take care of the microbes all over your body, inside and out. The, on the outside of my body, I had to wipe these antibiotic things, like these cleansers all over my body before the surgery that killed. So antibiotics are a great thing, but they, they kill the good with the bad a lot of times. I'm reading a book on it right now. It, it's 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 an amazing book, and it's it's not anti antibiotic. It's pro antibiotic, but it's saying you have to be careful because you're wiping out the the good with the bad. So now I have to be conscious, and I need to make sure that the areas right around the wounds are cleansed very well. But I don't want to. I want the stuff in the other areas to grow back. So I'm not w scrubbing myself down like a madman. Also, I'm, I'm drinking fermented, um, like the vinegar that's a byproduct of fermenting vegetables, which I do, because that's probiotic. So I took all these antibiotics. And while I was in surgery, they were pumping me full of antibiotics. And um, you get through it. One thing about taking care of your body is that when you come up against a big problem, a big medical problem, your body's going to be so much easier to get through that problem. Like I was running and stuff. I, I did a, a marathon out there in, I think, Lo the Long Beach Marathon. Or oh, your dad was out there with me just a few months before going through my cancer ordeal. And I was still running races up until around the time that, that like, when I was... When I was diagnosed, like, hey, you have throat cancer, I was in the hospital within a couple of days, so I wasn't running anything after that. And then one of the big things is, okay, I got through it. And one reason I got through it was my body was in good shape. It could handle all the stuff. And then afterwards, I didn't have as much atrophy as, as the next guy who's leading a sedentary life. And, and, and isn't doing what he should do and then goes in the hospital. You know, so... So we need to do that. We need to take care of all those things we need to make sure that we get them done, that we don't just pay lip service to it. Now, the one thing that I do is let's see what we got here.
So here I have, I started this on the first day out of my boot. Getting ready to have physical therapy. I'm out of my boot. And my goal was to just be able to go out and walk, say, five miles. Hike five miles if I wanted to. When I got started, they said, well, hey, maybe you could get back to running. And so that's my goal now is I want to be able to run. And then I go down here. Now, I, I kept it every day, but you just have page after page after page. It, it's just too much. And you don't really care so much about everything that happened in the past. You just want to know, you know, where you were. So on day one, I was at a little over 216 pounds. Now today I took it and I'm at 210 pounds, or almost 211 pounds. So that's a good thing. I'm going in the right direction. I would love to get under 200, and I would really love to get down to like 190 or even 185. That would be great. As I get into my mid-70s and, and 80 years old, I should be at that weight because carrying over 200 pounds at my age is pretty hard, even if you're in half-decent shape. So when I get up in the morning, I take my weight, And then I come downstairs, and I try not to always do this first thing in the morning, but I take my blood pressure, which is very important, because if your blood pressure is high, you might have a heart attack. I think that might even be a factor in a stroke, and you don't want to have that. And, and the, heart, the, um, the blood pressure cuff also measures your pulse. And then either walk or hike, but I always call it a hike. How many minutes did I do? And riding a bike. Right now, I'm not allowed to ride a bike. Right now, I'm not allowed to run. And But I have gotten to run a little bit, not much. See, here's six minutes. That meant that I was doing six one minute kind of bursts where I would run for one minute then walk for one minute and when I was done just walk home and then the next week I was able to do this one here which is actually it should be 12 minutes but it, it read a little more than that so I was doing a two minute run and one minute walk and doing that. Um, and then here was another one down here that was like that. But now I'll need to get, I'll need to work back up to that so I can see all those things. And then stretching. Stretching is very important, and stretching is a thing that I've been very bad at, at keeping up with. I'm, I just haven't. It's not a good thing. And I need to really take it seriously. And I am this time. But right now, I can't do a lot of stretching because some of it is going to put pressure on these areas that I could start bleeding in the arteries and I wind up at the emergency room. So that's no good. So one of the things about having something like this that you can keep as you refer back to it, but it keeps you focused on the now. Like right now, I went out today and I did, I think, a 55-minute walk. I walked over to UPS and picked up this little package and came home. And uh, my blood pressure was kind of high. When I was in the hospital, they had it down real low. But, you know, it was kind of high this morning. And so I'll be able to see, because, you know, this 
if you look, I took out every every one from two to zero. So I went from one, and then I took out two through ten, and then I took out twelve through twenty, and took out you know um, twenty-two through thirty, and on and on and on. But then when I got up to fifty, it, it's day by day. So once I'm done the sixties, I'll, I'll probably take out the fifty-two through sixty, and the you know the fifty-one will go up here. So I can always look back over the last few days, and then I can look back. Hey, this is where I began. And the the only other things in here that I keep these are three things that are on my Apple Watch. It's a move ring exercise ring and uh, stand and so the movement is is um, activity you know how how active were you and then exercises well how many minutes a day did you get your heart rate up enough to be considered exercise and and you know you want to do at least 30 minutes a day of this every day you need to get your heart rate up to exercise pace every day. Even if you're not doing cardio, even if you're not running, like just go for a walk. Go for a half hour walk. It's good for you. And then according to the Apple people, you should stand at least once an hour for a minute. And it tells you at 10 minutes of the hour, like you haven't been up all hour, get up. Get your lazy butt up and move. So that's what it is from here at the beach. Live a good life. Take good care of your body and your mind and your soul. And hopefully we'll all have a long life together. Peace out.